killed my baby. I am a police officer. The bullet that killed Libby Weld was fired by your gun. What possible motive could I have for killing Libby Weld? This is a frame. They're trying to discredit you in... This is a departmental matter. Well, in that case, what do you want? Heroin! Two kilos of heroin. As agreed. Test it. Oh, well, they're professionals. You won't fool them with bags of milk sugar. Trench went off the clock at 8.30 a.m. to start a two-week vacation. He was joining his wife and children who were fishing on the East Fork of the Salmon River. The double bag he'd packed the night before was in his trunk. The lieutenant is a very methodical man. The fact that he'd forgotten to pack the casting flies he bought for his son's birthday showed that he needed a vacation. Yeah, Trench. Uh, Lieutenant Trench, it's Libby. I've got to see you right away. Oh, my. All right, I'll meet you at the corner of Montana and 13th in 10 minutes, but it's got to be quick. No, uh, here. Uh, it's important. Please, Lieutenant, I can't go out. What's the matter? Not on the phone, I, um, but it's real important. All right, I'll be there. Dispatch, this is 4 Alpha 1, come in. Hey! What are you doing? Y'all have knocked over 
Oh, my baby carriage. God, you scared me out to death. What do you think you're doing? Description of the car. Sergeant Baker. Yes, Lieutenant. What address? Well, that call came in a few minutes ago. A black and white folder. They give a name? Uh, the unit's here now. He was pushing my baby carriage down the street. This man almost knocked me over. He had a gun in his hand. And then he walked over. There he is. That's the man. He could have killed my baby. I am a police officer. I'm going to reach into my jacket and get my ID. Sorry, Lieutenant. Okay, folks, excitement's over. The phone was cut, my radio disabled while I was knocked out. It's a professional job. I want the lab here. I want to go over every square inch of this place. One shot to the left temple. Looks like a large caliber wound. This is Lieutenant Trench. Huh, oh, Lieutenant? I just called for the coroner. How'd you do that? <laughs> On the phone. Oh. Don't worry, Lieutenant. I didn't mess up any oh, prints. wasn't working. Mission three, one ten Liberty, nine oh nine on a four five nine, nine oh nine on a four five nine. Radio wasn't working either. You were familiar with the dead woman? Libby Weld was an informant, Captain. And you visited her house frequently, whenever it was necessary. No. Uh, Narcotics is a very lucrative business. We're trying to make it last. So, Captain, am I being accused of something? I'm questioning you. That's my job. Is this an official investigation? I cleared it with your captain. He's willing to let me question That's not what I asked. Am I being investigated? You're being questioned. Several witnesses claim that they saw you leave the house with a gun in your hand. Now, the investigating officers claim that there are discrepancies in your statement at the scene. Those discrepancies need clearing up. Well, I suggest we wait to see what the lab turns up. May I see your gun, Lieutenant? You may. Sergeant, you will witness that this is Lieutenant Trench's gun. So witness that one bullet has been fired. many friends, oh, well, it's not that I'm antisocial. I, I just don't believe that policemen should drink in public, so I don't have a bartender that I can talk with. My wife's out of town. I haven't made it to church for more than a little while, so I'm not on confidential terms with any minister. The only person available to whom I can unburden my soul is a middle-aged beach bum of somewhat questionable repute. You have a problem? Yeah. Step into my office. Is it business or personal? Well, a little of both. I'm being set up for a frame. Internal Affairs is investigating me. Who set you up? That, all well, is the problem. Captain Gunther of Internal Affairs has found a number of discrepancies in my statement about the Libby Weld murder. Were they? Yeah. None that can't be resolved. What really troubles me is that Gunther seems to have an almost personal resentment. That's natural. What do you mean, natural? Well, you're good at your job. Gunther would call you a uh, college cop. It's naturally resent you. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Gunther's a good policeman. I don't always agree with his... Trench, mind. you have tunnel vision about your work. By your own admission, you do not drink in public. You do not socialize with the other members of the department. You're a snob, you're opinionated, and what's worse, you're usually right. I don't know that you're the best judge of that, Orwell. You are a dropout. And for every one of you that lives the hippie life, there are two of me who have to stay in and work twice as hard. 
You know, I could envy you this. My yacht. Yeah. That's my real ambition. You can bet if this tub were mine, she'd be in the water. Might even be floating. What was Libby Weld involved in? Uh, she knew pushers, contacts, nobody high up. She was a user, graduate of Lexington. Now, this is a narcotics investigation. A ring that imports millions of dollars worth of heroin annually. And the broker at the top of the operation, he built a wall around himself. He had complete anonymity. Well, must have contacts on the streets. Somebody knows him. It's a very tight organization. We can't get in anywhere. Well, you must have been getting close. Why else would they frame you? I have been through the files again and again and again. What does internal affairs have? Little hanky-panky with the girl? Hmm? Oh, well, I'm not sure I like the drift of this No, no, no. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, even with police officers. Panky, panky. Come in. Lieutenant, I'd like to speak to you. Is there something the matter with the phone, Roberts? Sir, Captain Gunther was in again. Well? Sir, may I speak to you in private? Roberts, it's perfectly all right to say anything in front of, uh, oh, well. oh, what's well. his name? Uh, Captain Gunther has a ballistics match. Go on. Sir, the, uh, the bullet that killed Libby Weld was fired by your gun. trench at Libby Weld's house sounded like kung fu or karate. And from what he told me about the angle of the attack, his assailant couldn't have been much more than five feet, three or four inches tall. An oriental? Well, I had to start somewhere. Oh, Trench also told me to stay out of it. But I was never a very obedient friend. No class is open now. Try later. I'm looking for Leonard. Now he won't be in today. Try later. Well, if you see him, would you give him news? He'll know how important it is. Yeah. If I see him. Oh, well, huh? Where is he? I got rid of him. Good. You never heard of me. Hello, Leonard. Harry. It's always nice to have friends you can drop in on, Leonard. What do you want, Harry? An Asian who hires out to kill people. <laughs> Look, I don't know if I'm killed. You know, from jail. Harry. Look, I got a lieutenant friend that's getting a little fat. He needs a workout. Maybe I'll give him the name of your establishment. Uh, wh wh why me, huh? Well, because you're here, Leonard. It's the breaks. <laughs> Chen. Chen. <laughs> Walter Chen. Is he an addict? Yeah. Buy from you. From me on the street, what's the difference? I know, I told you. So why don't you go, huh? Where does he live? Venice, Galileo Street, on the canal, 1421, from the pad man. Water Chen.
again. You did it. Lost to concentration. Magnanimous in victory, Trench. Oh, well. I didn't know you played racquetball among all your other strenuous athletic pursuits. I'd better get back. Have you heard about Chen? Not the details. It's been suggested for the time being I lighten my caseload. You know, Chen was fairly short. I told you to stay out of this. We got to say please. It's very unlikely the organization would employ a hitman who was an opium addict. Too unreliable. I was plan to kill him afterwards and close the case. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, very hi. How are you making it? Oh, I'm getting by, Harry. Just getting by. Is that insurance straightened out? Yeah, they sent me the money, and I know you did a lot to help, and I want to thank you for that, Lieutenant. Is that the citation? Yep, the citation of valor, Ernest Dorn. My boy gave his life in the line of duty. He deserves everything the department can do, Jimmy. You know, when that boy was always talking, he used to say, Lieutenant Trench said this, and Lieutenant Trench said that. I wanted to be just like you, Lieutenant. Now he's, he's dead. If you don't want to play racquetball, Orwell, what is it you do want? Well, I want permission to look at the complete files of your investigation. I can't authorize you to go through official records. Gunther has already requested your package Captain for personnel. Captain Gunther is a member of the police department. He's making copies of the files you won't let me see. Well, what could you see that I couldn't see? And I could look at it with a fresh eye. Trench, I can think of a lot of reasons for wanting to kill you, but this is a frame. They're trying to discredit you. In turn, they'll discredit your investigation. This is a departmental matter. That's how it's going to be handled. That's how it's going to be solved. The canal is very cold this time of year. The coroner's having a tough time estimating the time of death. He figures Chen was killed somewhere between midnight and 6 a.m. in the morning. Now, do you have an alibi for that time period, Lieutenant? Yes, I do. Best alibi in the world. Oh. Not what you're thinking, Orwell. Gunther had me tails. When did you get on the juice, Ruby? I don't really dig it, but it's legal. What kind of law says it's fine to be drunk, but bad to be stoned? What well, turkey thought that one up? Well, nobody's perfect now. Is it tough to stay clean? <laughs> It's tough to stay alive. You must disappoint some of your old friends now that you're not using them. You know, you're either writing a book or asking questions like a cop. Either way, it's bad for my business. Yeah. Uh, I'll take care of business and all I want is some talk. Whatever turns you on. If I wanted to score Ruby, who would I see now? I don't use. Don't you know? Stop jiving, Harry. If you want to score, all you got to do is walk down to the nearest corner and fight off the pushes. All right, I want somebody big. I don't want your average street corner peddler. You help me, the police will be very grateful to you. <laughs> I don't want grateful. I just want alive. All right. Set it up for me. Who do I see? Rabbit. Rabbit Morassage. He's an errand boy. That'll teach you not to believe everything you hear. All right, call him for me. A call? OK. But that's all your money's worth. And then the party's over. You've been on this narcotic investigation for four months. How many arrests have you made? You have the file, Captain. Not one. Not one single arrest. Now, either this town has gone on a religious revival, or you're not interested in getting the people who handle this stuff. It's a tight organization. If you've studied the file, Captain, you've seen the leads we've followed. They haven't worked out. They certainly haven't for some members of the department. Shall we discuss Ernest Dawn? He was an ambitious young officer. I respected him. I encouraged him. Perhaps I encouraged him too much. Well, he's not here to tell us how much you encouraged him. 
And he can't tell us about the Greyfriar building. The Greyfriar building had been under surveillance for several weeks. If you will read the file, Captain, you will find we were shorthanded. Officer Dorn took it upon himself on his own time to follow a suspected runner. On his own, he followed him into the Greyfriar building. Where he was killed. He was acting against my explicit orders. A, he was off duty. B, I was not present. And C, his actions seriously jeopardized the entire operation. Well, if you felt that way, how come you cited him for bravery? He was young. He was overeager. He was impetuous. But he was a good policeman. Several people feel he was such a good policeman that he was deliberately set up. Captain. Are you seriously accusing me of arranging Officer Dorn's death? I'm questioning whether Dorn died because he knew too much. And I'm also questioning the death of a woman who might have been blackmailing someone in the police department. Those are accusations, a whole series of them. As a police officer, you know what slight circumstantial evidence they're based on. Let's get to it, Captain. This is a personal matter, isn't it? Personal? You think you're above the law? Because you're such a hotshot kid with a high IQ? Who got himself promoted over men with 20 years experience? Real policeman who could. Your name Orwell? Yeah. Stand up. You rabbit? You got something you want to talk to me about? My name is Harry Orwell. I'm a private investigator. I used to be a cop. I was with the San Diego Police Department. What'd I do? Forget a parking ticket? Well, you may remember three years ago there was a big uh, narcotics bust in San Diego. How'd it go to San Diego? Well, uh, three years ago, uh, when the arrest was made, uh, two million dollars worth of heroin disappeared. The arresting officer at the time was the Lieutenant Harry Orwell. That's me. You trying to say you have the stuff? When I left the force three years ago, I've been very cool. I left San Diego a few months ago. I've been waiting a long time to make a deal. Interesting story. If it checks out, maybe we can talk a deal. No, I don't want to talk to you. I'll give you 10% finder's fee. I want to talk to the man, the broker. You want a deal, you'll talk to me. I've been waiting three years. I can wait longer. Wait a minute. I want 15%. Well, if I get the deal I want, all right. Where do we get in touch? I wrote it on the paper. Take a trip to San Diego. If he's lying, kill him. You know, I'd do anything I could to help Lieutenant Trench, but I just can't let you have those files. I don't want the files. Serve the ball. You don't? No. Well, in that case, what do you want? Heroin. Heroin? First quality stuff. What do you want heroin for? To catch a rabbit. How about police seizures? No, there's nothing. Honest, even if I were willing, there's nothing at all. Hey, what about an independent dealer? You know, there's lots if you can pay for it. There's one more condition. It can't be from the syndicate. I don't want to trace back to me. In other words, it's just impossible. Unless you want to go out of town. Hey, Malcolm Rosen. Heroin? No, Malcolm, stop. The police have been aware of your kitchen for a long time. They haven't arrested you because you never made a sale. 
to now. You never have, have you? I never have, I, I swear. I, I never will. It's for Mama. Mama. It's all right, Mama. I, I'm just having some friends in. It was the doctors. When I was born, they gave her laudanum to ease the pain, and uh, poor mother's never been without pain since. And then when old Dr. Epson died, they wouldn't give her any more. And it's, it's my fault, really. See, I was a difficult birth. Show me the kitchen. Look, I know it's show, illegal, Show me but the kitchen, Malcolm. You make heroin from scratch? Oh, yes. Yes. My sister has a farm in Napa, and there's some lovely big greenhouses there, and that's where I grow my papaver somniferum. That's the opium variety. The only trouble is my, my sister doesn't know what I'm growing it for, and uh, she's won so many blue ribbons with her roses that she keeps wanting to exhibit my poppies, too. You refine it right here? It's not difficult. It's time-consuming. I guess you could call it my hobby. It's for Mama. It looks okay. It's pure diacetyl morphine. How much do you have? That's it. Well, I just went down to the farm yesterday and I brought back a new batch of sap. How long will it take you to refine it? A week. Maybe a little longer. That's too long. I'll have to fake the rest. What? I'm going to take this. What, what, what'll happen to Mama? Tell Mama to hang in there. Um, my name's Orwell. I have an appointment. Mr. Harry Orwell? Yep. Mr. Orwell, would you have a seat and fill out this form, please? In the case of Libby Well, we heard the testimony of the Department of Ballistics. The bullet that killed Libby Weld was fired from Lieutenant Trench's gun. The very gun you were wearing immediately following her murder. What possible motive could I have for killing Libby Weld? What were you doing the uh, 24th of last month? 24th, uh, uh, it was my day off. Um, I went to a movie, took the kids to a driver. And that was the evening. Yeah. Uh, garden in the daytime. Went to the boat show. He priced a cabin cruiser. Several, Captain. Cabin cruisers cost over $100,000. Boating is... I was going to say, boating is my hobby. It's not. It's my dream. My fantasy, if you wish. You own a... Uh... $52,000 house. Uh, I would imagine that's uh, pretty hard to manage on a policeman's salary. Yes, it would be, but my wife inherited some money. Captain, are you now accusing me of taking graft? A board of inquiry doesn't accuse, it questions. Now, would you please wait outside? Gentlemen. Come oh, Mr. Orwell. Thank you, Miss Adams. I'll uh, ring if I need you. Yes, Doctor. Want to open up? Take a quick look around while you're here. Rabbit tells me you're a smart cop. Well, I'm just smart. Mm. 
You claim to have retired with the nest egg, waiting for it to hatch. Uh, and you check me out or I wouldn't be here. Well, well almost everything checks. Except uh, you're still seeing a lot of cops. What's your game, Orwell? Everybody has to be somewhere. I'm a private detective. The only thing we should be concerned about is two kilos of heroin. <laughs> what price? Uh, three years ago, it was $2 million, but the cost of everything's gone up. All you have to do is go to the supermarket to figure that out. And I'm gonna give you a deal. The price is the same, $2 million. <laughs> uh, where is it? When you add the money, the two will come together. Uh, I'll think about it. Rabbit will let you know. But, Mr. Orwell, if you're not what you appear to be, you have a leaky inlay in your third molar that you will never need to have replaced. Lieutenant Trench, will you please return to the boardroom? It's the consensus of this trial board that the matter be handed over to the district attorney for possible criminal charges. Pending such action, Lieutenant Trench shall be relieved of all police duties. Okay. Okay! What do you think you're doing? Oh, just hanging out. Sergeant Roberts told me you were trying to buy you some heroin. You that out of him with a rubber hose. Why were you trying to buy none of heroin? Your, none of your business. My preliminary hearings this afternoon. I must admit, they have a pretty good case. You're trying to hire me in your own desperate way. In my own desperate way. Yes. All right, I'm hired. Now get out of here. Take the drink. Get out of here. If that's the way you treat your clients, no wonder you live in a. What is this? Heroin? One packet is. And what's the rest of it? Milk, sugar. A little pinch of this, a little pinch of that. And you set up a buy? Stay out of it. Oh, well, these people you are dealing with, they are not going to be fooled by bags of milk I Don't worry about who I'm going to fool. It's a nice place you got. I've been going to the wrong dentist. Mr. Orwell, this is Dr. Crane, of my chemist. He'll check the quality of your merchandise. If you'll just hand the case to Dr. Crane, we'll Dr. get on Dr. With Crane the can check the quality of my merchandise when Harry Orwell checks the quality of the money. Two million dollars, as agreed. You suspect counterfeit, Mr. Orwell? Rather negative approach to a business venture. Huh? Well, if it is, it's very good. Besides, I'm not going to spend it all in one place. And now your merchandise. Two kilos of heroin, as agreed. Uh, forgive my caution, Mr. Orwell. Test that one. Victor 1 to Victor 2, over. Victor 2, over. Stand by, Victor 2. Roger now.
Excellent color. Excellent quality. Excellent. Good. Let's make a quick analysis and spot check a couple more bags. You're a very cautious, man. I try to be. Now, yeah, armed guards all over the place. Your own man led me here, and you still had us fallen. Fallen? Well, you're very rich. I guess caution pays off. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, come on, you saw the van. It followed us all the way from Sunset. Marshy, maybe he didn't want me to leave with the money. Maybe he didn't want me to leave at all. But I'm very cautious, too. I wrote a letter, addressed it to myself and care of my attorneys. If I'm not there to receive it tomorrow morning, the whole transaction will be public knowledge. Was there a van? I didn't see it, honest. Well, we can't take a chance. Are you sure about the quality of that stuff? Oh, quite sure. Excellent. Good. Get him out of here. Uh, what about the money? Yep. I'll send it. Uh, not leaving without the money. Get him out of here. Yeah, sure. Proceed to phase two. Proceed to phase two. It couldn't be cops. I was careful. It better not be cops, Rabbit. Hey, wait a minute. Not here, Rabbit. Where are you going? You can follow me. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Well, then follow me. <laughs> you can bet I'll follow you. Come on, oh, well, let's get this over with. 15%, that's $300,000. What'd you hurry? <sighs> I never saw William so shook. You sure we were followed? Yeah, I'm sure. Aren't you sure, Roberts? Roberts is sure. Roberts? Uh, Robert, this is uh, Sergeant Roberts. Who's he? Uh, he's a police officer. You guys gonna bust me? Well, you better pray he sends you to jail. Uh, uh, I don't get it. Oh, give him a sample. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, well, let's get this over with. 15%, that's $300,000. What's your hurry? <sighs> I never saw William sir. How long do you think Williams is going to let you live when he finds out that we sold him a case of sugar? Who framed Lieutenant Trench? I don't know. All right, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Make sure Williams gets covered the table. Oh, I swear on my mother's grave, whoever shot that girl, it had nothing to do with us. You gotta believe me. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to get down on my knees? I'll get down on my knees. Look, I'm down on my knees. You want me to beg? I'll beg. Listen, I'm begging you for my life. Uh, uh, I got a, a family. I got responsibilities. Please, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you know, the rotten part of it is I believe it. If it wasn't Williams trying to get the lieutenant, Makes no sense at all. Chen. What? Who killed Chen? I told you everything I know about Chen. You know this man? No. I've never seen him before. Yeah. When? What do you think I got, huh? Some kind of photographic memory or something? Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. I got a load of, uh... Tuesday. Was he with Chen? Yeah. Will you testify to that under oath? Captain Guthrie, you state that Lieutenant Trench offered the trial board no explanation for the obvious incongruities in the story of Libby Wells' death. That's correct. Now, if an officer were trying to cover up the details of misconduct, isn't it true his best defense would be an offense to permanently silence? 
Lieutenant Trench, if you won't object to the prosecution's leading the witness, the court will do it for you. And you will confine yourself to proper legal form. Yes, Your Honor. No further questions. Lieutenant Trench? No questions, Your Honor. Witness may step down. Your Honor, may I call Leonard Soong to the stand? Call Leonard Soong. Leonard Soong, take the stand. Lieutenant Trench, may the court know the identity of the man at the defense table? I'm sorry, Your Honor. This is Harry Orwell, a private detective. He has some evidence vital to the stand case. Up, may he right be hand. permitted to sit at the defense you saw table? Me swear to tell well, the truth, this is the an informal truth, hearing. Nothing but the truth, so help if the God. district attorney I doesn't do. object, State your name. Leonard I'll permit Soong. it. No objection. Uh, may I present some photostatic evidence? Will the attorney for the prosecution approach the bench? Well, what's the significance of these? Your Honor, may I be permitted to develop that significance from the witness? Market Defense Exhibit A. Proceed, Lieutenant Trench. Mr. Soong. You operate a karate studio on Western Boulevard? That's right. Did you know Walter Chen? Yeah, yeah I know. On the 14th of May, did yeah. you see Walter Chen in the presence of another man whose picture you have already identified? Objection. Did you also see an exchange of money between these two men? Objection, Your Honor. Identity has not been established of this second man. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Soong. Do you see the man with whom Walter Chen exchanged money on the 14th of May here in this courtroom? Yes. That's him over there. The man with glasses next to the officer. Your Honor, the witness has identified James Dorn. No further questions. Mr. Wilson, do you wish to question the witness? No questions, Your Honor. Witness will step down. Your Honor, may I recall James Dorn to the stand? Mr. Dorn, will you please return to the stand? May I remind the witness he is still under oath? Mr. Dorn, you have previously testified that your son died in the Greyfriar building as a result of a narcotics investigation being conducted by my office. Lieutenant, do you know that my boy would have done anything in the world for you? Uh, your Honor, since this is an informal procedure and uh, Mr. Orwell is most familiar with the evidence, would it be possible for him to explain it? If the district attorney has no objections. No objection, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. The photostatic copy... May I have defense exhibit A, please? I give your attention to the photostat of the canceled check from the Police Department Life Insurance Fund made out to Ernest Dorn's beneficiary, his father, James Dorn. The other document is a photostat of a deposit slip to the account of Walter Chen. The amounts are the same. The dates on both documents are May 14th. That's the same day that Mr. Song testified he saw the exchange of money between the two gentlemen. I'd just like to ask Mr. Dorn... Your Honor, this may be an informal hearing, but... Sit down, please, Mr. Wilson, and let Mr. Orwell continue. I just wanted to ask Mr. Dorn what the money was used for. He killed my boy. You know, when your son went into that building, he was deliberately disregarding the orders of Lieutenant Trench. But my boy is dead. So you had to blame somebody. You blamed Lieutenant Trench, the one man, Jimmy, you should have been most grateful to. You know, Jimmy, he covered up to protect your son's record, to protect you. And what did you do? You went out and hired Walter Chen to frame Lieutenant Trench for the death of Livy Wells. And then you killed Walter Chen and became a murderer yourself. Isn't that true, Jimmy? Isn't that what you did? Harry, you know, I, all my life I worked hard and I ain't never done nobody no trouble. I mean, the rest of the people out marching and burning, and you know what I was doing? I was working hard for my boy all the time. I was 
say to him, son, you got to study hard because there's a better day or coming. I said, you got to be smarter than the, than, than the white man. You got to study. I said, and just and just because you grow up here now and that you got on the, the uniform, you still got to make them respect you. You got to show them. Maybe that's what he was trying to do, Jimmy. All that work and all that hope that you, that you, oh, I ain't got nothing left. It's not easy being your friend. I couldn't figure out how Chen got your gun, and it came to me. The only time you left it unguarded was when you had it in your locker. And our mistake was thinking that it had something to do with a syndicate operation. Well, wait a minute, you're gonna be late for your That's class. probably the DA. On Rabbit's testimony, the whole gang should go down. Trench, where are you? Why, did you read in the paper? No, no, take a cab. I'll explain when you get here. <laughs> of course I'm glad. OK. They got tired of waiting. Who? Who? My family. They called from the airport. I won't need a lift. Oh, uh, well. Thank you. What's this? My bill? This is a bill? Yeah, well, it's standard. $100 a day and expensive. Uh, I, I don't understand this $75 item. Right, and I had to bribe the bank clerk to give me What's this charge here? Yeah. Statement, that's detailed on page 10. Can't you read my handwriting? Has it occurred to you all well to get a typewriter? I'm not trying for the Pulitzer. I expect things to be done in a business-like manner. That's why I hired you, Orwell. You sure your family's coming back of its own free will? 